Okay, I have a question for you. What does an equal sign actually mean? Did you think it meant find the answer? I know a lot of kids seem to think that equals means find the answer. And you know what? It actually doesn't. That is why sometimes kids start to get a little confused if we mix up our addition problems. So, you know, sometimes we see something like 7 plus 3 equals blank, and it looks like this, right? 7 plus 3 equals blank. But sometimes we also see something more like this blank equals 7 plus 3. It doesn't matter which order we show it in and where the hole is and where the part is because an equals doesn't mean find the answer. What equals actually mean is to balance both of the sides. And so we are going to um, do some balancing of equations today and make sure that the two sides match each other. What this means is that sometimes both sides of the equals will actually be made up of parts and we won't have a whole. But it's important to still know what the whole is to be able to tell if the sides are balanced or not. Let's look at some examples together, shall we? Okay, so here I have a scale. It's a tool to measure how things balance. Um, and as you can see, the little arrow here in the front is lining up with an arrow down in the blue section as well. So we have the green arrow and the blue arrow that are kind of lining up. Now, this scale isn't absolutely perfect, and my table might not be perfectly straight either. As you can see, this is still kind of rocking a little bit. But I did put here an equal sign because if this side equals this side, then it will be balanced. And down here, these arrows will line up. Okay, so let's start with something we already know. Let's do a math fact we already know. Should we do a way to make a 10? Okay, what is a way to make a 10? How about just 5 plus 5? Okay, so here I have 5 and 5. If I put 5 and 5 together over here, right now it's not balanced because this is 0, right? So 5 plus 5 definitely doesn't equal 0. Let's find out if 5 plus 5 equals 10. So I'm going to take a group of 10. Okay, so here's my stick that makes 10, and I'm going to actually break it in two parts just to make it fit better. And when I put it there, what's happening? Let's see if I can get this to slow down quicker. Ah, do you see that 5 plus 5 on one side and 10 on the other side balances? We can see that they are lining up the arrows. Okay, so we know that five plus five equals 10 because they balance. I think if I put this as a 10, it should still, it would still balance. It might just, there we go. Okay, so five plus five equals 10. We can see that those balance. But guess what? Five plus five can also equal seven plus three. Okay, so again, I have five plus five stayed over here. And when I had seven by itself in here, it doesn't balance. You can see those arrows are not lined up. But if I do seven plus three, then it balances. So five plus five equals seven plus three because they balance with each other. I'm gonna write that down. Five plus five 
equals seven plus three. Okay, five plus five equals seven plus three. And I can know that's true because I know five and five is the same as 10. And I know seven and three is the same as 10. So really, five plus five equals seven plus three is the same thing as saying that 10 equals 10. Let's look at some other examples. Because we practiced different ways to make numbers, and we know we can get to the same number, not just with addition, but also with subtraction. So let's think of a number that we can use. Let's, let's keep our 7 there. Okay. But when I have 7 and I take away 2, what do I have now? Okay, so if I have 7 here and I take away 2, 1, 2, is that going to balance with 3? Nope, we can see that the side with 7 is still heavier. So it doesn't balance with 3. What would it balance with? Does it balance with 4? So I did 7 minus 2. Is that balanced? Not quite. Those arrows aren't quite lining up. You can see the green is a little bit further this way. Okay, how about 3 and 2? Okay, 3 and 2. Does that balance? Yes, you can see that those are balanced, okay? So I had I started with 7, and I took away 2. 7 minus 2. And it didn't balance with 3, but when I added to my 3, I added 2, then it balanced. How do I know that's true? I know that's true because 7 and 2 is a way to make a 5. And 3 plus 2 is also a way to make a 5. So what I really showed is that 5 equals 5, no matter how it is that you make the 5. Okay. Now let's see what happens if we skip steps. Okay, so I'm going to have it back here to 0. And I'm going to write down a math fact that some of you might come across. Okay. I'm going to write down 7 plus 1 equals 8 minus 2. And we're going to see if this is true. Okay. So does this balance? That's my question for you. 7 plus 1 equals 8 minus 2. Now, I see kids skip steps sometimes, and it makes me sad because I know you have the skills and the tools in your brain to be able to figure this out. So let's look at it one piece at a time. When I see the equal sign, that means I'm going to look at both pieces. Okay, I want to see both sides, both boxes, and see what number those represent. So here I have 7 plus 1. What is 7 plus 1? 7 plus 1 is 8. So if you're just going quickly and you see, oh, 7 plus 1 equals 8. There's an 8. Am I good? No, because remember this 8 is not by itself. Okay, This 8 is not by itself. We also have minus 2. So if I have 8 and take away 2, do I still have 8? No, I only have 6. Does 8 equal 6? Is this true? It's not. Okay, 8 does not equal 6. 
this one would not be balanced. We can show it here. Okay. So remember, the first thing it said was 7 plus 1. So let me get my 7. There's 7 plus 1. There we go. Okay. And then we had 8. There's eight. Okay, right there, it is balanced, but remember, eight wasn't the end. It wasn't just equals eight, it was eight minus two. So I'm gonna take my two away. One, two. Now is it balanced? No. So these do not equal each other. So that's why it's important to make sure you look at the whole thing. You can't just stop because you got past the equal sign, okay? You have to put it in a box and think of what it goes with to find out if the two sides are equal, okay? Let's look at some more of these together. Oh, there we go, okay? We're going to decide if these are equal or not equal. Ready? Four plus six equals 10 plus two. Equal or not equal? True or false? Well, I'm going to put each side in its own box. Four plus six makes what? 10. 10 plus two, bump out zero, is 12. Does 10 equal 12? No. So these are not equal. Okay, let's look at another one. If I have nine, plus four, does that equal 15 minus two? Remember equals is telling us we're looking to see if they balance. So I put this side in a box and I put this side in a box. Nine plus four, what does that make? 13, good. 15 minus 2, what does that make? 13, good. So are these equal? Yes, they are. Okay, but you know what? We're doing this today with lots of extra add-ins, but it's true any time. Okay, so if we look at a math problem that we've seen a lot, maybe 8 plus 4, equals 12, we're still checking to see if it balances. Okay, when we check our work, we're saying, hey, that side of the equal sign needs to balance with that side of the equal sign. This side is just a number by itself, but it could, might, could be just like 12 plus zero or 12 minus zero, right? The other number isn't there. Remember zero means nothing, so 12 plus zero we wouldn't need the zero there. It would just be 12, right? But still, we're looking to see, does this side of the equal sign balance with this side? Eight and four is 12. And of course, 12 is 12. So do they balance? Yes. Okay. So we are always looking when we see an equal sign not necessarily just for the answer. We're checking to see if the two sides balance. Ready? Let's see how well you can be a detective and check for those balanced numbers in our work today. Good luck.